From where not to waste your time with items and gear to some useful controller options, here's 7 quick and easy things you should know at the start of Hogwarts Legacy. No spoilers or anything, just useful tips to help you along your way that the game doesn't explicitly tell you. So first off, when wondering how to approach exploration and side quests versus the main story, it's probably worth mainlining the first half of the main campaign. This will allow you to get things that will make exploration easier and more valuable, or in the case of some puzzles and areas, even possible. Certain things like the rumour requirement and the ability to fly a broom, the Alohomora spell, which is required to get into some chests and areas, need you to play like 10 hours of the main story to acquire. So get those things and you won't have to waste your time trying to figure out a puzzle or remember to come back to an area that you can't do. That being said, exploring the castle is fun to do and there's plenty of things you can do on your way by, so even knowing that, you're probably going to get distracted doing some side stuff anyway, but that's fine. As a second point following on from that, the same goes for spells. You learn many of the spells as some sort of semi-side quest, completing certain prerequisites when you play the game for professor's assignments, unlocking the lessons in which they will teach you the spell. Same story, worth doing ASAP. Being aware what professor's assignments you have in the background. Okay, for my third point here, I want to talk about controller options, because there are some fairly typical things here that you may need to change, like if you like inverted flight controls for a broom for example, I'll be honest, I can find the broom a little bit unwieldy because the pitch is entirely on the right analog stick with left and right on the right analog stick being entirely camera. With your being on the left analog stick with no ability to explicitly roll. So it's not like flying vehicles in other games and there is no option to change that unfortunately. But something I do definitely recommend changing or at least trying is the camera controls. I think there's going to be a bunch of people who find that the default camera controls are a little bit hard to manage and get a grip of I just felt a bit off, a bit bizarre. So if you feel the same way, it's worth at least trying this. Go to your controller settings, turn camera acceleration all the way down and turn camera speed all the way up. See how that works for you, thank me later. Next up, items and gear. How not to waste your time and make the most of it. You may feel conflicted about wearing the most powerful gear and looking how you want, but you don't need to worry. Transmogrification is available basically immediately. Any gear you pick up, the cosmetic appearance of that gear becomes an option to choose and apply to any other gear immediately. So essentially, what you want to do, anytime you pick up an item of gear, wear the best gear you have and then change the appearance of it however you like, by pressing square instead of X over that piece of gear on PlayStation for example. Simple as that, and then make sure to sell your gear at the earliest opportunity. So you'd rather make that money than destroy it or not be able to pick up some piece of gear from some dungeon or something because all your gear slots are full. Just wear the best, sell the rest. Oh, and a bonus tip if you're talking cosmetics. Once you choose your wand, you can find new handles, but the design and colour that you pick is locked in for the whole game, so choose wisely. But it is of no consequence to combat or anything else. And some of the bonuses you may earn from DLC or linking your Harry Potter fan account will show up only as cosmetic options in the transmog menu, not as items of gear in of themselves. So if you're struggling to find them, look there. Okay, next we have the Revelio spell. You learn this very early on, it's your ping, your environment scan, it highlights interactive things and can reveal hidden field guide pages for points of interest. But when you use it, if you have a ping, that means it's found something. So if you can't see it, listen out for the sound. It is directional and it will get louder the closer you are, so it can lead you to a hidden point of interest. So now we have a nice little quality of life one which might be fun for exploring. There is a time of day system and certain areas will have completely different vibes based on if it's day or evening. So you may want to explore at different times of day. Now certain missions do require times of day, but the mission start marker will have the ability to wait there. But what I want to tell you that's easy to miss is that you can wait anywhere. If you're in the map, you can see the icon in the bottom there, just click the analog stick and wait the change from day to night or vice versa. I'm currently making a video comparing common rooms and different areas of the castle in day and night and that little button proved invaluable. And lastly, a little talk about the consequence of your house choice. Obviously, you have the common room you are given. If you want a better idea of what they will look like, I've got tours of all of them on my channel. Also, the house colours affect many of the cosmetics in the game, with the accessory colours of those cosmetics linking to your house colours. Each house has three fifth year NPCs. Now, while you may get a few extra interactions with the NPCs in your own house, you will be able to interact with the others and do their relevant missions, regardless of your house choice. But to confirm, you can't enter the common room of other houses. As for the main story, it doesn't seem to have any real effect, but there may be some variation. Avoiding main plot spoilers, I was speaking to someone about where we were in the game, 
and we got confused because it seemed like we were in the same place, which we were, but the way we were describing the mission made no sense to him. Basically, he had to help one of the ghosts to impress someone, and I had to help find someone's lost heirloom wand. Both of these missions eventually led us to the same place, which was in the same main storyline. So there is some variation in how you get there, but I don't know if that's because we were in different houses, I was playing as Ravenclaw, them as Gryffindor, or if we were different levels, or it was just random variation. But that would help multiple playthroughs be a little bit more varied. I just know that he was sent to the kitchens and I was sent to the owlery. Hopefully you find all that useful. I'd appreciate if you liked the video if you did. Feel free to check out my other videos for more Hogwarts Legacy, God of War Ragnarok, shorts memes about Call of Duty, whatever else. And subscribe if you want any more of that. Take care and enjoy Hogwarts. I have tried to say the word owlery like five times in this take. Owlery. 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 Ugh.